As we learn more about trees and plants and the resources in a wilderness setting, the more we see the value in all these resources. Today we're going to talk about natural dyes, so stay tuned. Alright guys, so we're going to talk about natural dyes today. In front of me, and we're going to zoom in on this stuff in a little bit here, I have four different pieces of material, well actually five. The white piece in the middle is what I started with, and the other four are pieces that I dyed with resources that I found in the environment here where I live. So we're going to get a close up and I'm going to go through this quick and then at the end we're going to talk a little bit about the process to dye material and some things you can do and some things you don't really need to do. Alright guys, so here's the materials. This is what I started with. It's just a plain piece of white cotton. And I wanted to gather some different things just to show you is that there's so much stuff out there that can dye material and you're going to get different shades and it's going to depend on how you cook it, how long you keep it in the dye bath for, if it's a hot dye bath, cold dye bath, all that's going to come into play. But I just wanted to do a couple pieces here. So I cut foot long pieces, maybe a little bit shorter, a little bit longer here. And like I said, this is what we started with. So you can see, and I'll move this along as we talk about each one. Starting on your right and my left hand side, um, I actually picked some goldenrod. Goldenrod's pretty plentiful this time of year around my area. So basically for this, I just cut the goldenrod up, the, uh, the gold part and the green stems. I put a pretty good amount in some boiling water. I boiled that down and I'm going to talk about after we get done this, I'll talk about a little bit of processing in a little bit further. But as you can see, it came out a pretty um, pale yellow color which is a pretty nice color for the woods, specifically around fall or anything like that, if you're looking at more um, coloring some items for hunting. The next is sumac. Now for this I used, I brought the whole plant out just so I can show you guys what I used, but I actually just used the, these berry parts. Okay, so I put these in boiling water, I crushed it down, and right away I had my material in. And it came out, like a burnt orange type color and it came out as you can see it's a pretty vibrant color for using a natural resource like that. To move over here we have Queen Anne's Lace and basically with this I just cut it all apart. I left the flowers and everything on. Now I used a lot of this and I got a pretty nice lime green color. It's still a little pale and it's a little bit uh, blotchy on some spots so I probably could have cooked this a little bit longer or left it and die a little bit longer but it did come out pretty well. And to move on to the last piece, we have some birch bark. And birch bark is very, well birch trees in general, very plentiful in my area. So I took the bark. Now, from some of the research that I did, they said the inner bark, as you can see, it has that brownish color compared to the outside. I cut it up into small squares, maybe quarter inch by quarter inch squares, and I put it in. I did use a lot of birch bark for this. And as you can see, I got a, a light tan type color. So that also came out pretty well in overall. So I'm pretty happy with all this stuff and all the colors that I came out with. There's so much stuff you can use out there. These are just a few options that I had this time of year so I wanted to show you guys. So I'm going to back the camera up and we'll talk a little bit about processing and how we actually can dye this stuff. Alright guys, so we went over, we did the up close, and I showed you some of the resources that I used for dyeing. And I like to keep the process pretty straightforward. If you do some research on your own, you're going to see there's some people that they say you need to do this and do this and do this to prep everything. But when you're out in the woods, I like to keep stuff very simple and no nonsense. So, what I've done with all of this is, I always say boil it three times and then you're good to go. And what I mean by that is, basically to process any type of plant, or any type of bark, root, even berries. The, the process is going to be pretty much the same for dyeing any type of material. You're going to gather your materials. You want to cut them up or break them up into smaller pieces. You don't want to just throw your whole entire stock in. If you're using something like this, you actually want to just break that down. Or if you have your knife, as you can see, just break it down in small little pieces. I would actually take my knife and really cut this up real fine and put this in my water. 
I usually try initially to start with as much material as I can for what I'm going to need and I try to match that with water. So I want it pretty packed with plant material, with bark or anything like that. So once you get that in your pot, you bring it to a boil and then let it cook down. Add some more water, let it cook down. Add some more water. On that third time is usually when I add in my material because at that point you've drawn out a lot of the color already out of the materials that you're, you're trying to get your dye out of. So that would be a hot dye. Now I have tried already with black walnuts which a lot of people that's the first thing they think of when they think of natural dyes. I've cold dyed stuff with that and it came out okay. It comes out a little bit better if you use a hot dye. Um, and you can do that with just about anything. I've saved a lot of dyes so I'm going to try in the future with some of these dyes that I've saved to see how they're going to come out um, with just using a cold dye after the fact. Also a lot of people say to pre-treat your material before you dye it. My only little um, pickup with that is if you're in some type of self-reliant situation you don't want to waste any, any resources you have to do something like that when you're still going to get the same effect. Maybe not the exact same vibrant color but you're still going to dye your material. And if you did want to take that approach, just to test it and see, there's two different things. They normally say, if you're going to use berries or any type of juice, that you'd want to take one part vinegar, two parts water, bring that to a boil, and then add your material. After that cooks for a short time, bring it out, rinse it out, and then actually dye it in your dye bath. For anything else, barks or plant material or tree material, you would actually want to make a salt bath, which would be one part salt and two parts water. Bring that to a boil, boil your, your material in that, bring it out, strain it out, and then rinse it, and then you can put it in your dye bath. The only thing that I found doing it that way, the color might hold a little bit better, but I didn't see too big of a difference, so I normally skip that step, and I just get my materials cut up, I get it in boiling water and I cook it for a while. So I just wanted to go over this quickly with you guys because there is a lot that nature has out here to provide for us in a wilderness setting. No matter what we need, if it's the camouflage or changing the color any of our gear or anything like that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more. I'll be back with you shortly. Thanks guys.